Welcome to the, the Tipping Point Show. I'm the uh, guest host for today, uh, Mark Hitchcock. And uh, you can uh, catch my weekly program every week called Marking the End Times. I do that uh, a weekly program and uh, where I, I do some teaching and answer questions. And uh, again, thanks, thanks for watching today. We always appreciate having you with us. And uh, what I want to do today, I want to have a, a bit of teaching and then we'll go to a, a time of some current events for subscribers only. And then I'm going to answer some, some really good questions. I'll tell you a little bit more about that at the end of this teaching time. Uh, but during this teaching today, what I want to talk about is a, a very unique prophetic passage, um, one that we get a lot of questions about. You probably had some questions. I hope I'll answer some of these today. It may generate some more questions uh, that you can, you be, you can uh, send in that we'll answer. But I'll talk about the removal of the restrainer, the removal of the restrainer. That, the only place we find out about this that restrainer that's removed in the end times is in Second Thessalonians chapter 2. That's the key text, a very unique uh, prophetic passage. Now, to kind of put this passage in its context, uh, the Apostle Paul uh, traveled over to Greece on his second missionary journey. And up in the area of Macedonia, he visited the city of Thessalonica. And he stayed there for a few weeks. And while he was there, he taught them about a lot of different topics. But he taught them a great deal about prophecy or the end times, which let me just pause right here and just make a comment about that. You think about Paul was probably at Thessalonica, maybe for six to eight weeks. We know from Acts 17 that he, he taught in the synagogue there for, for three Sabbaths. So he was there at least three weeks, but probably there a little bit longer to carry out a Gentile ministry there. But Paul was only there maybe six to eight weeks at most. During that time, Paul taught them extensively about Bible prophecy. Now, you know, a lot of people will say, well, you know, the, one of the things you don't want to ever teach to new believers is, uh, you know, tell them about Bible prophecy and confuse them all about end times. But Paul didn't believe that. Um, he, he really uh, gave these, these believers there at Thessalonica a crash course in Bible prophecy or eschatology. So he got run out of town from Thessalonica, he eventually makes his way down to the city of Corinth in southern Greece. While he's there, he writes a letter back up to the Thessalonians. So that's First Thessalonians. I mean, in the meantime, uh, the Thessalonians, some false teachers came in and began to tell the Thessalonian believers that they were in the day of the Lord, uh, that the tribulation period had arrived. And uh, they, they actually signed this letter as if it was from the Apostle Paul. So it's a, a counterfeit, spurious letter. Now, the, the Thessalonians were undergoing quite a bit of persecution. So to them, you know, it seemed like, well, may, maybe we are in, in, in the day of the Lord or, or this time of tribulation. So Paul writes the, the letter of 2 Thessalonians primarily to convince and to show the Thessalonian believers that they're not in the day of the Lord, that the tribulation period um, has not arrived yet. And uh, down in, in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and uh, verse 3, he says, Let no one in any way deceive you, for it will not come, talking there about the day of the Lord, the tribulation, unless the apostasy comes first. I think the apostasy there is a, a, a great falling away. It's going to be a landslide of defection and rebellion against God. And then he says, and the man of lawlessness is revealed, the son of destruction. So before the tribulation period can come, now I believe earlier in this passage, he tells us the rapture has to take place. So the rapture will happen. Uh, we'll have this, this total falling away, this apostasy, this, this uh, just surging deception. And then the, the Antichrist is going to be revealed. So since those things haven't happened yet, then these Thessalonian believers can know they're not in the day of the Lord. So basically, the Thessalonians are confused, if, if you will, kind of about the order of end time events. So Paul writes this chapter here to, to, to uh, correct this false doctrine, but also to lay out the correct order uh, of some end time events. But he goes on then in verse four, talking about the Antichrist. And he says, who opposes and exalts himself above every so-called God or object of worship. So he's going to be worshiped as God. He's going to take his seat in the temple of God, displaying himself as being God. Now, the word temp for temple there refers to the inner sanctum, the, the holy of holies. So he's going to take his seat in the holy of holies in the temple, which obviously that means in the end times, a third temple is going to have to be rebuilt a third Jewish temple there on the Temple Mount for the Antichrist to take his seat in that temple. Then it says he'll display himself as God. And then, and then Paul says this, don't you remember that while I was with you, I was telling you these things. So when Paul had been with them in person, he was teaching them all about this. And he says, don't you remember while I was still with you, I was telling you these things and you know what restrains him now. 
And what he's saying here is, you know what restrains or holds back the coming of the Antichrist? Something is holding back the coming of the Antichrist so that in his time he may be revealed. For the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. Only he who now restrains will do so till he's taken out of the way. So you'll notice verse 6 and verse 7, there's a mention of a restrainer, something that's holding back the Antichrist from coming on of the world scene. And again, this is the only passage in the New Testament where we read about this restrainer in the end time. So it's a very unique passage. Now, Paul tells us there's something here that's holding back the full outbreak of evil on the earth in the end times. And notice here, they know who the restrainer is because Paul says, don't you remember when I was still with you, I was telling you these things. So Paul had told them uh, clearly. Now, Unfortunately, throughout church history, it hasn't been quite as easy for us to figure out who the restrainer is as uh, as, as it was for them, because Paul had clearly laid this out for them. Now, if you read commentaries and, and, and uh, <clears throat> Bible study books, you'll find out there are at least 10 major views of who this restrainer is. Um, St. August, Saint, uh, Augustine said at one time, he says, I frankly confess, I, confess, I don't know what the passage means. So, you know, a lot of people just kind of throw their hands up. But there's really a a couple of main views. I'll just mention these quickly. Some believe, in fact, the majority view is that this is human government. Um, The human government, in fact, maybe even the Roman Empire at that time was what was holding back um, evil. Now, of course, government does hold back evil. That's one of its purposes to is to restrain evil. But it can't be the Roman Empire here because it fell. The Roman Empire did 1500 years ago and the Antichrist still hasn't been revealed yet. Um, so also um, human government is not stronger than Satan. So whatever this is, th- this restrainer, it's holding back Satan from from being able to bring the Antichrist onto uh, the world scene. And, you know, certainly uh, uh, government can restrain civil lawlessness, but it can't restrain uh, Satan and his power. Also, think about this during the tribulation period, human government's going to be stronger than it's ever been before under the rule of the Antichrist. And so we all know that government is the source of a great deal of evil. It doesn't always necessarily restrain evil. Um, and then the second view, the main view, and this is the view that I hold, and that is that the, res- that the restrainer here is the Holy Spirit. And as I'll kind of clarify in a moment, it's really the Holy Spirit and his restraining influence through the church. Now you say, well, why do you hold that view? Well, a couple reasons. Notice in in verse uh, 6 there, again, if you have uh, your Bible, he says, and you know what restrains him now. So whatever this restrainer is, it's a what. But then down in verse 7, he says, only he who now restrains will do so till he's taken out of the way. So notice here, there's a change of gender. This Whatever this restrainer is, is both a neuter and a masculine. And that fits with uh, what we know about the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is, is sometimes referred to by the neuter. The word pneuma or spirit in the New Testament is a neuter word. But also the Holy Spirit is often referred to in the masculine as a person, as a he. So this restrainer is both a who and a what. It's both a person, but it's also a power. And again, that fits well what we know in Scripture of the Holy Spirit. And really the second reason, the main reason why I believe this restraining influence here primarily is the Holy Spirit is who is there that's powerful enough to hold back the power of Satan? I mean, the only answer to that obviously is God. The only answer to that clearly is only God himself. And the member of the Godhead who's consistently spoken of as restraining evil is of the Holy Spirit. In fact, all the way back in Genesis chapter six, verse three, you know, God says, my spirit will not always strive with man. You know, to hold back the evil in the world. So I believe the Holy Spirit here is this restrainer. Now, someone would ask, though, well, where does the Holy Spirit reside today? Well, the Holy Spirit resides in the hearts of believers. Um, each individual believer is a temple of the Holy Spirit. So when the church is taken out of the way, I believe, or when the Spirit is taken out of the way, I think that means the church has to be raptured to heaven. We have to go with the Spirit because the Spirit indwells God's people. So I think the restrainer here is the restraining influence of the Holy Spirit through the church, through the church of Jesus Christ. There's a great quote I ran across years ago by a a Bible teacher named Donald Gray Barnhouse. And here's what he says. He says, What is keeping the Antichrist from putting in his appearance on the world stage? You are. 
you and every other member of the body of Christ on earth. The presence of the church of Jesus Christ is the restraining force that refuses to allow the man of lawlessness to be revealed. True, it's the Holy Spirit who's the real restrainer, but as both uh, 1 Corinthians 3.16 and 6.19 teach, the Holy Spirit indwells the believer. The believer's body is the temple of the Spirit of God. Put all believers together then with the Holy Spirit indwelling each of us, and you have a formidable restraining force. For when the Spirit is removed at the rapture, the Holy Spirit goes with the church insofar as His restraining power is concerned. His work in this age of grace will be ended. Henceforth, during the Great Tribulation, the Holy Spirit will still be here on earth, of course, for how can you get rid of God? But He will not be the indwelling believers as He does now. Rather, He'll revert to His Old Testament ministry of coming upon specific people. So, the restrainer, the restraining influence in the world today is the Holy Spirit working through the church. That's also a proof, I think, in this passage, again, of the pre-trib rapture. Because think about the, the, the order of this and the logic of this. Paul says here that the day of the Lord, the tribulation can't come until the Antichrist is revealed. But this passage tells us the Antichrist can't be revealed until the restrainer is removed. So obviously the strainer has to be removed, the church taken out of the way by the Spirit, before the Antichrist can be revealed, and he has to be revealed before the day of the Lord of the tribulation can come. So this is a another strong argument that the church is going to be taken out of this world before the Antichrist is revealed and before the tribulation period is uh, is unleashed. It's another argument too, I think, for the idea that we wouldn't shouldn't try to be uh, trying to identify the Antichrist today or figure out who he is, because the restrainer has to be removed before he can come on the scene. So I always like to tell people, you don't want to know who the Antichrist is. And if you ever do figure out who he is, I've got bad news for you. You've been left behind. Uh, you don't want to know who the Antichrist is. You want to be uh, taken out uh, before the, the man of lawlessness is revealed. Now, <clears throat> one of the main objections to this view is, is people often say, how can the Holy Spirit be removed from the earth? You know, like, like Barnhouse said in that quote I read a moment ago, he says, you know, how can you get rid of God? But it says here he's going to be taken out of the way. Obviously, the Holy Spirit is God, so he's omnipresent. I mean, he has to be present on earth during the tribulation period for people to get saved because it's the Holy Spirit who brings about conviction and brings people to, to faith in Jesus. Um, so the removal of, of the, the, in, the influence of the Holy Spirit, I, th I, th I think, will be what I kind of call like a reversal of the day of Pentecost. Remember the day of Pentecost, the Spirit came to indwell the church. Well, the Spirit had been on earth before that time, but he came in a unique way to indwell the church and to indwell individual believers. So the removal of the restrainer will be just a reversal of Pentecost. The removal of the restraining influence through the church is going to be taken um, out of the way in this world. Now, what is the, the Spirit holding back today? What's the Spirit restraining? The Spirit today is restraining Satan from putting his evil plan into full swing by bringing his man on the scene, the Antichrist. Uh, someone put it like this years ago. They said the man of lawlessness is straining at the leash, but he can't come out into the open until God permits. So the restraining influence of the church is holding back Satan's ability to be able to bring the Antichrist onto the world stage to make his uh, debut. Um, you know, to me, it's fascinating when you think about all this, about here we are today as the church of Jesus Christ. We're indwelled by the Holy Spirit. This is the restraining influence. And someday when we're taken out, when the church is taken out and the Spirit's restraining influence through us, Satan's going to bring his man onto the world scene. And that's going to begin to initiate then the tribulation period and the, the full unleashing of Satan's evil during the end. Now, let me just mention a couple of, of applications from, from this for our lives today that I think are really helpful. One is, and this is beautiful, is that God has a timetable. God has a timetable. You notice it says here again in this passage, you know what restrains him now so that in his time he may be revealed. Even the development of evil is under God's control and it's on God's timetable. It's in his time that the Antichrist will be revealed. Satan would love to turn the Antichrist loose on the world right now. He'd love to have sin have its maximum expression in our world today. But the restraining influence is holding him back. And obviously, the only one who can do that is uh, the devil himself. Um, you think about this. Th there was a fullness of time for the coming of Christ. 
We're coming up now on uh, the Christmas season. We're entering into that Christmas season. We read in Galatians 4, 4, that in the fullness of time, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law. In the same way that there's a fullness of time for the coming of Jesus, there'll be a fullness of time or a proper time when the Antichrist will be revealed as well. There's a definite time for the second coming of Christ. There'll be a definite time for the coming of the Antichrist. So when the rapture occurs, the spirit indwelt church and its, rem- and its restraining influence is going to be removed. And Satan will be able to put his man on the world scene. The final obstacle uh, to him bringing the Antichrist onto the world scene will be removed and the door will be wide open for the Antichrist to come to power. So that means that Satan has to wait on God's timing. So Satan's defeat is certain long before he ever begins his final assault. In other words, Satan is defeated before he ever starts because he has to wait for God's timing uh, to bring his man on uh, the world scene. So Satan's hands are tied by the sovereignty of God. I mean, here's a second lesson for us, and that is, I believe Satan has an Antichrist ready in every generation. Satan wants to bring the Antichrist on the world scene, but something's holding him back, and he doesn't know when the restrainer is going to be removed. So I think there's always an Antichrist who's alive somewhere on the earth. You had Nimrod and Pharaoh and Nebuchadnezzar, Alexander the Great, the Caesars, Napoleon, Hitler. And there, there's somebody that Satan has waiting in the wings today. And of course, if the timing's right, that person would become not just an Antichrist, but they would become the Antichrist. But Satan always has somebody ready um, on the earth. Here's another point. Think about this. This is a, this uh, time we live in today is a time of restraint. I mean, with all the evil we see in our world today, this is the time of restraint. So the time we live in now is the restraint. When the restrainer is removed, there's going to be a time of rebellion. I mean, evil is just going to flood the earth. And then there'll be the age of revelation or restoration uh, when Jesus comes. But literally all hell will, uh, will, will, will break out on earth. I mean, evil is going to run rampant. It's going to be like a dam being removed when this restrainer is taken out of the way. And evil is just going to, going to come in like a flood. I mean, think about if this is the time of restraint, what in the world it will be like when the restrainer is removed. And I can assure you, you don't want to be here. Uh, You don't want to miss the rapture. And so if you've never come to Jesus Christ, you need to know that Christ is our only refuge and you can flee to him uh, for salvation. The Bible says, whoever will call upon the name of the Lord uh, will be saved. Now, back years ago, when the when the atomic bomb was first developed, Dr. Arthur Compton was one of the committee of six scientists who created that bomb. And after it was created, you know, there was a time of real reflection by them. You know, they realized that they were unleashing a power in this earth like you'd never seen before. And Compton knew that life on earth would never be the same. And here he made this great statement. He said, man must now go the way of Jesus or perish. And that's the choice for our world today. And really, it's our choice individually. You go the way of Jesus or you perish. And that's what we see uh, where our world is ultimately headed. Uh, Another lesson here is... This is a foreshadow of what's coming. The, the, the foreshadow of what's coming is already here. In uh, 2 Thessalonians 2, he mentions the man of lawlessness. That's the Antichrist. But he says the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. So while the man of lawlessness has not been revealed yet, the mystery of lawlessness is already uh, being revealed here on this earth. So the spirit that will dominate the career of the Antichrist is already operative and expanding here on earth and building. And it's driving towards uh, the day of the Antichrist. And the swelling tide of evil that we see today, uh, the profound magnification of evil on every front, is this mystery of lawlessness that's the buildup to the restrainer being removed and evil just coming in like a flood. It's a, it's a preview of what's coming. In fact, one author put it like this. He said, the world advances. The world advances. We all see that. <clears throat> We're living in an incredible explosion of technology, likes of which people never imagined even 50 years ago. The more advanced we get, the more weapons sinners have, and the more devastating those weapons become. More and more ways are invented to express sinful corruption. And that's what we see happening in our world today is it's just proliferating. Um, the same thing we, we find in uh, 1 John 4, 3, the spirit of Antichrist um, is already present in this earth, world. The Antichrist isn't here yet, but the spirit of Antichrist is here. Uh, here's another thought for you to, to think about in this removal of the restrainer. Is sin being restrained in your own life? 
is sin being restrained in your life um, and in my life? You know, we can talk about the removal of the restrainer and how evil this world is, but you know, the Holy Spirit lives inside of us. And I like what someone said years ago. He said, the spirit is resident, but he wants to be president. And uh, you and I, if we decry the evil out there in our world today, we want to make sure that sin is being restrained in our own lives uh, by the power of the Holy Spirit as we yield ourselves to him. And then one final uh, thought here, one final word of encouragement. We need to keep the end in mind as lawlessness abounds. We need to keep the end in mind as we see the lawlessness in our culture today. I'll close with this. Uh, Admiral uh, Jim Stockdale was the highest ranking U.S. military officer um, during the POW camps in, in Hanoi, in, in uh, North Vietnam. And he was tortured over 20 times during his eight year time in the, the prisoner of war camps from 1965 to 1973. And he lived out the war without any prisoner's rights, didn't know when, his, when he was gonna be released, didn't know if he'd ever see his family again. When they asked him how he made it through that harrowing time of captivity, he said this, I never lost faith in the end of the story. I love that. May God give us in these times we live and in, in, in with evil proliferating, the mystery of lawlessness at work, the spirit of Antichrist. May God give us that same hopeful perspective as we see the evil around us, that, that whatever happens, that you and I won't lose uh, faith in the end of the story. And we won't lose faith in the end of our story. And if we have our hope and our faith um, in Jesus Christ, because in him, the end of our story will be better than anything uh, that we can ever imagine. Well, thanks so much for watching. We're going to transition now to the uh, subscriber section. So if you're a subscriber, uh, we'll be uh, back with you here in just a moment. And if you're not a subscriber, you can go to endtimes.com for just $7 a month and you can become a subscriber. And we'd love to have you uh, join our, our community. And I think it'll be, uh, you'll, you'll, you'll find it to be a great investment. But we'll go into the subscriber section. I'm going to talk about uh, some recent uh, uh, declarations that were made at the G20 meeting. So kind of a vaccination, global vaccination passport. I'm going to answer several questions, several of which are related to the millennium. Uh, so we'll be right back with the subscribers.